Hello to you all. Um, I Hello. I this for the, uh, for the presentation. So we are back now. Uh, started last year with the first seminar about this, about how we got into the game. And most of you guys that didn't know about it are still here. I'm going to take a brief history view of what happened to us. Eric, we uh, introduce ourselves? Mm -hmm. No. They know who we are. Do you think? Otherwise, they won't be here. I'm Eric Bartels. I live in the Holland. And I'm a, I live in Holland. And I'm a uh, professional repairman for more than 40 years. And he is Mr. Jim Askey, Mr. Apple Juice, my biggest friend. Yeah, I'm, um, hello everyone, thanks for coming, first uh, thing to say. Um, I'm um, Jim Askey, I um, run a pinball and arcade business for uh, full time last 12 years, um, doing software hardware engineering. Um, one of those projects um, was Magic Girl. Um, started as the original programmer with John back in 2012. Um, tried to keep the project going through all the turmoil. Um, picked it back up with the Dutch guys in 2018. And um, yeah, this um, seminar is, is to continue the story that we were discussing last year, um, what we've been doing. Um, the improvements, changes, um, features that we are uh, trying to Im improve. We started the project in 2019. The end of 2018, we found a magic girl in Holland. And the guy you see on the photos is Roger and Max, and they fell in love with it, but they don't any know anything about pinball machine techniques. So they knew it wasn't working, and Roger convinced Max to buy one. And then Max said to me, can you fix it? And I had five minutes to answer, and I said, yeah, why not? And that, uh, that took me on a journey of more than three and a half years to fix the machine together with Jim. And as lo uh, long the, 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 the re restoration rebuild was continued, we also tried to purchase all the Magic Girls that were available. And in the end, you had nine Magic Girls, eight normal production ones and one uh, prototype. In the previous photo, you saw a prototype, and this is six of the production models. One nice story was that a guy that came to the com company of Max for uh, things that was involved in that company was a pinhead. And he was walking around doing his business and he saw these machines and he, oh my God, he almost fainted and he made sneak uh, a picture. And we had to convince, his, convince him not to go public with it. And they thought we were going to produce Magic Girl. So there was a lot of uh, troubles we <laughs> got in, but the photo was kept behind. And this is the game room uh, where also the video here was presented. And this is the first Magic Girl that was ever uh, rebuilt and was in working condition and where, where we did all our testing on. And what we found was a real nice box of lights. American Pinball provided the assembly. What all they did, together with John, was get all the parts, throw it into a play field, and didn't check anything. So the failures we found at first, because you are going to test what's wrong with this machine, the first thing was wrong, they were missing 12 switches, and three of our switches that had diodes, they were soldered wrong way around, so we had one big Christmas tree of failures. And even the trough PCB was not quick enough for the computer. So sometimes he saw two balls, sometimes four balls, six balls. And even there were no balls, he saw balls. So that was also the first PCB to redesign. And we stole some technique from uh, Stern. The right PCB is a copy of one of the Indiana Jones from Williams. And the left one is our own copy. And it looks almost similar. And so we try to keep it as close to original as possible. Because otherwise, the magic girl would be a magic boy. We also added a new power supply. Uh, because there were missing four magnets 
four coils, they needed to have a big power supply. So we, as we went along with restoration, suddenly the machine dropped dead several times. And then we noticed that the power supply was only giving four amps for a complete machine. So we had to redesign it, uh, a bigger power supply for 48, 12 volts for the computer, uh, another uh, filter kit in it. And when that was finished, we got ourselves in a lot of new trouble. Then the computer, on the left uh, photo, you can see the old computer. Fortunately, because we had nine of the games, we found nine different computers in it. And that gave us troubles with updating chipsets and whatever. So Jim and I decided to throw out the computer and, comp and put a, a simple gigabyte bricks in it. And that makes it also easier for us to update it. And these are just small things because there are more than 70 items that had to be changed. One of the funniest items is on the right, uh, left side. It was the original up kicker with a magnet on top that, that would fetch the ball like a circus for tail ringmaster. And even uh, up to at the moment, the ball was fetched by the magnet. The coil also took the, the plunger up. So the ball would never be fetched because of the magnetism close to the plunger. So we have to extend the mechanism, lower the coil, uh, make the, the, the kicker what long, add what some longer. And American Pinball or John or whatever, they glued the magnet onto the bracket. You can see a little bit of glue underneath the left magnet. Because, yeah, it was a shit design. Even the potion spinner, on the left side, you see the ref reflective opto technique of John that didn't work because they wanted to have some plastic parts be reflective. That didn't work. So we changed it in, into a, just a normal opto, old school opto with a, a little van underneath. And now it works perfectly. Just some few examples. Extra lights added by using piggyback boards so we, so it didn't need to make extra holes in the play field or extra PCBs. Left photo, one of the missing uh, magnets was from the hair yet. First of all, put a magnet in and wait what's happening. Now that was very uh, obvious because it began to smoke because it was programmed as, as full power. So we had to change that and add a magnet. And because it was fun to keep the plastic in, we drilled a hole in it and put it on the bottom of the magnet. An auto shooter, John hates auto shooters, but that was a good reason to put one in. And also we got a, now a six ball multi ball, so you need an auto shooter. One of the things was also that <laughs> uh, you couldn't see some of the inserts as a player because the plastics are on top of it. So with a rabbit, we made his butt translucent so you can see through the, the plastic. Just small details. At the beginning, last year I was here, and we announced that we did it, and we showed everything. Chris from Cointaker came to me, and he said, yeah, I have three of the games from John, and I lost a lot of money because of a pre-order. And then he said, can you do my games also? Yeah, I ship it over. No, you come to my place. And then we decided to do a, a, a tour in America to fix those games. So I went to Sunsbury at Chris's place, other people came also to Sunsbury with the game. And we converted uh, five machines total. And in the middle is also a prototype. So Chris has one prototype and two production games. They weren't even got out of the box. They were new in box because he was so sick of it. He put it in the corner and he never looked at it. So we had to unbox them, put them on the legs, and in uh, record time of three days, we did all three of the games. And <laughs> the prototype was, uh, is a little bit different. It's missing some holes in the play field. But those holes we used for the lock mechanisms. So we had to drill holes in the play field. So we made a video of me drilling holes in a prototype play field, put it on the internet, and then the war started. <laughs> because everybody was, oh no, you cannot do that.
we have to. So now, he, this is the only prototype is playing at this moment. Even the more prototype from at Max's place, our own, is not playing, but his is. And, and now he says, I'm family. <laughs> I gave him too much discount, I think. Uh, two years ago, when everything was really uh, uh, kept secret, somebody uh, told us about the lockers of John that would be auctioned. And they told us a price that was unbelievably high, and we said, now we have everything. We are on a good way to, to finish it, so we're not going to do it. Last year, somebody called me. I bought the locker rooms. And I said, OK. And how is it coming that you speak Dutch? Yeah, I live five miles from you. Oh, my God. And do you have it all? Yeah, he has it all. So I went to his place, and he had the real prototype of the magical. The first one was the one that was shown on all the shows with a little thing in the back glass. And it was always a secret to me. What is it? And it turned out to be just a disc with the bagatelle balls in it, with a motor, and if you finished the mini game, it would just turn one time around, nothing more. So no special thing, no special lights, only that. And we were uh, willing to reproduce it, but it doesn't add anything to the game. I think it should be like this. But it was nice to make photos. I played the game, and also we got uh, the examples on there were also some laptops found in the locker room, in the lockers, and on that laptops were original artwork from the Magic Girl. And we got uh, to get these little art things, and at that moment, it was clear to me that the left photo is a translucent decal that was on the spinning disk in the left out lane. And now it makes sense why it was translucent, because there has to be a light underneath. So the, the spinning disc will be flashing. And the right one is obvious, that was the speaker grill plastic. That's the first one we re also reproduced, and it's now on the game here in the hall, on the game of Robert Burke. And ours is lit from underneath, but we get it and got time enough to do that. He can do it himself. And now, we come to the big part, what Jim has done the last four years. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. So, yeah, I, I thought I'd um, try and explain a little bit about what I've been doing last year. Um, obviously, we showed the game um, in 2022. Um, it was a decently working game. And um, so I started to think about what else can I do? Um, how can I make it better for everybody? Um, more updates, um, tweaking things, polishing things, you know, trying to add extra value to, to the game. Um, so this first slide is, is a kind of summary of um, game feature um, updates. Um, this is a, a screenshot of um, the code interface uh, when I'm working on updating things. Um, I thought I'd decide to try and add some new I'm saying polish, but I, I'm kind of meaning like extra items to features, modes, and um, light shows, um, text improvements, that that type of thing. Um, I also um, wanted to add some new text to various um, graphical elements to try and um, just, you know lift it a little bit. So um, yeah, um, we we spent quite a bit of time. Um, working on those changes. Um, I also, my, my kind of code style is um, a kind of iterative sort of process. I, I often release quite a few updates um, repeatedly to try and you know, improve in small changes. Um, we also try to take as much feedback from people playing. Um, obviously, everybody plays in a different way. And I, I find that there's, there is no other way to to improve a game unless people have played it and have um, shot features in a different way. I mean, I, I find myself, I could play the game um, in my studio 15 hours and not find a single problem. 
and then somebody else, w um, say I show, walked up to the game, first ball, some kind of problem I've never seen. So it's always yeah. important to um, UK pin fest this year. <laughs> <laughs> have as many different people to play in as many different ways as they can, I think. Um, so, to, moving to on. To add something, our first game was, uh, we, we put it in the Museum of Girard, and every time, it, 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 it's not open for the normal public. If you want to play it, you have to ask in Girard. And it's not important that uh, it was played many times, but in the, during the year, it would boot every time. This is the first winning of ours. And last year, uh, here at the at the hall, you can tell them how many games were played. It was enormous. Yeah, more than 900 games in 50 hours. And if you imagine that this hall is only open for 42 hours, so we don't don't know what happened, but. We know that uh, Ashley played for at least eight hours before opening. <laughs> it was still working. Okay, so um, my next slide is um, to do with sounds and um, speech. is obviously a, a massive part of pinball machines, as we as we all know. Um, so I was sat there and I was thinking th the original. Um, set of sounds, the assets that we had done with John um, back in 2012-13 were, were, were quite limited. It was still in a kind of early stage of development, really. Um, so I thought, I'm, I need to find someone else to um, make some more speech. Um, luckily, these days, there's a wonderful um, website called Fiverr where you can find all sorts of amazing talent um, so I, I found this really great lady who, um, within a, f a few days, could just record over 200 um, different phrases that I'd created. Um, so I, I then sat around, um, and this is what this um, image is here, is um, all the different phrases that she's sent me. I'm cutting them up and then finding a place to put them into the game. So yeah, now there is uh, over 200 um, more uh, callouts. So, um, it, and the game is now telling you what to do. Yeah, callouts are really important in a, in a pinball machine. I think, um, like like Eric's going to say. Call out in the original. Was it from John, or did you write a new script for John? I went kind of one step beyond what we had originally um, discussed together. I would say so. I came up with a new script, um, knowing how the game should play and how the game um, needed to help the player in certain regard. Um, so we, we basically expanded upon the original um, um, script that we've created. One of the other things, um, just go back to the next slide, sorry. Um, one of the other updates that still related to sound was, um, in pinball there's a, there's a thing called sound ducking, which is kind of a, a process where when, s when a, a speech call is played, it can lower um, some of the other calls and other music sound effects at that time to make the, the speech appear clearer. And that was still a kind of system that needed to be improved, so that's another um, area that I was trying to improve. So I spent quite a bit of time refining the sound system so that um, hopefully if you have played it um, this weekend and you played it last year, you'd notice the speech is much clearer um, when you um, are playing, and that's related to, to that um, sound ducking kind of system. Um, Oh, next one. Yep, next one. Okay, so just going back to what I was saying before about trying to add value and um, new excitement to the game. I mean, as we all know, the, there's a wonderful piece of technology called Scorebit, which is um, basically uh, online uh, tournament scoring. Um, so I was very keen to um, imp implement this type of feature into Magic Girl to kind of add um, that that kind of um, modern excitement. So um, just just go back one, Eric, please. Yeah. This is a sc this is the screen of um, how the system is um, connected to the Scorebit um, kind of world, as it were. Um, so Scorebit has two kind of ways that it can be um, implemented. There's a, there's, a, there's like a hardware element, 
and there's a software version. So the way I wanted to do it was in with the software um, connection without having to add any extra hardware. Um, another reason to make it just like an, a free update for everybody that's um, purchased a game or held onto a game or upgraded a game. I didn't want them to have to then purchase some more hardware or so I went the um, software way, which was complicated to it to work out, but w I got through it. And this is the screen saying the first successful connection to the the Scorbit uh, system. This is my own game um, at home. And then um, this is just um, quite a nice um, screenshot of uh, me playing my first online game, and uh, and then me recording my first official. Uh, grand champion score on um, a Magic Door game. So that if you were to go onto Scorebit, the system, you, you, you would see my uh, grand champion score, which I hope someone will beat soon. So. Yeah, I put my glass off. And then <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, um, that's just a little quick summary of, of what I've been working on the last year. Um, one thing I want to say is, if you have played it, um, either last year this year um that's maybe um one of the other games that people have got if you do go on pin side you can rate the game and i really would love it if we could get the game rated um to be included in the top 100 i mean you need 50 game reviews to do that so if you do have time please um enter a rating and do you want to yeah i can say something uh, this year was my first time I met Jeremy Zombie Yeti, and I was always uh, anxious to know what he thinks about the magical. I know what the history was. I know everything, so he could be glad or not glad, and he approved what we did with it, and he also approved that we made our own keychains, stole his artwork. And at the end, if someone wants key change, you can collect them, as many as you want. So does it anybody have a question they'd like to ask me or about any any part of it? No. Have a, have a what, sorry? Have you published any of the code? Uh, no, the, the code is still private. Okay. Um, yeah. Also to prevent stealing our work. It's three and a half years, four and a half years now and indeed there are m several people who claim to have the intellectual property there's another player on the market who says he has already got a new license and everybody's talking bullshit and even we don't have it and if we give the goat away people can produce this game in a, in a way that it won't be a magical again it's it's yeah Ashley? Uh, what are you guys planning on doing in the next year with it? Like, do you guys have any ideas about coming back to it next year? Eric, do you want to? I didn't understand the question. The question was, um, what next steps do we want to take over the next year? Retire. <laughs> after, s after starting in 2018, and weekly do one evening, and we can't hear the call outs anymore, and it's boring. And but at this moment, I think we're finished. Like all the other uh, projects, you have to say, now it's finished. Because I can do the Bagatelle game in the back box. We can add a lot of things we found on the computers of John. But it is what it is. It's a playable game with seven pages of game rules. Everything is working. Maybe there will be some bug. That will be solved, of course. But what can you do extra with it? It, it is what it is. And we rebuilt now 15 out of the original 19. It's not a secret anymore that 19 was the official production, but it's not true. That's a nice story. We had to re somebody asked me, can you do a rebuild kit? I said, no, it's impossible because it's so much work. No, I'm very handy, you have to send one. Okay, I'll make you a, a, a rebuild kit and I'll send it over. Where to? Australia. Okay. And then, okay, it would be a nice holiday to do it myself, but 
No, I will have to send it. As a, because of Jim did score bit, we needed to have the, uh, the, the, the number. Which serial number do you have? He said, number 19. I said, no, that's impossible because Cointaker has the last one, 19. No, he said, I have number 19. Send me a photo. And he sent me a photo of X19. So I called David and he said, and I said, what the hell, double 19? No, X19 means extra 19. We had some parts left. So that was number 20. We self bought ourselves number double zero. So that's 21, because if you start counting at zero, it's an extra one. And if somebody noticed, if you look at the back of Robert's Hitch game, it has no serial at all. So that's number 22. So unofficially, 19, officially 22. I think I, I just add something to the, uh, the question about what, what next steps we take. Um, as Eric says, it, the, the project is kind of complete um, as it sits now, but uh, as a software developer, it's, it's always hard to kind of um, just leave it alone. So I don't know, I, I still have ideas what I might do. Um, I do still want to add, to add extra graphics, um, some more animations maybe, um, into various areas, um, maybe some more speech for different characters. Um, but at this moment, yeah, we, we're kind of happy with how it is, how it's playing. Um, so yeah. Anyone else? Yeah, at the front there. Uh, I noticed a photo of uh, 3D printed parts in the office kit. Yeah. Is there any other 3D parts that you noticed that were there? Mm, yeah, we had uh, a lot of parts were 3D printed, like the, the potion spinner, like um, uh, some brackets for optos. And uh, we made them better, stronger, because they use a very old 3D printer, and if you would grab it, it would be crushed. So that's why we redone those. Yes? Hi, thank you for the seminar. I have a question. Thank you very much. I know that problem because all the games have that problem. It's a bad design. So by most of the games, we little, we little twisted, we twisted a little bit the scoop more to the left. And if the power supply is good enough, it will be very powerful and shoot it exactly on the left flipper. But here you have 115 volts, complete different system, and uh, sometimes it needs some little tweaking. You're observing this game, you're right, it's not good, but it's, it's a little adjustment. Yeah, not good. Maybe that's, but yeah, it's not my game. <laughs> Rob, and the one in the crate is my game. You can, you can buy it, no problem. Oh, okay, next question. Um, I think, f from my point of view, I mean, obviously, I, I've been, I was involved in it right from the beginning. Um, m my involvement with this particular um, reimagining of it, I guess, um, is to try and help as many people as possible, um, the people with the game, um, to make it more enjoyable, um, make it a worthwhile item to have. Um, so that's how I think both me and Erica trying to turn a negative into a positive. Um, obviously, we can't com comment all on other issues like the Zidwe the, the um, deep root um, part of it. Um, oh, we, we, wanted, we, got, we wanted to keep the history of the, the, the Zidwe. We know of it. We know everything what happened because 
people are writing to me and thinking that I make money out of a project of shit where I can tell you we even lost money on it. But it, it, it's a, it was a project we fell in love to because of the artwork. That was really the, the, the trigger to say, think this machine deserves to be built. And as long we kept it secret, we uh, at the end, there was some guy who contacted John about, what do you think of it? And he said, you sh they should have consulted me. But if so many people on this earth cannot work with John, may I, I'm a Dutch guy, I'm very direct. I think that it will be the last five minutes and I get into an argument with him and it starts fighting because it's a good artist. I love his work, but as a human and as a businessman, I think he sucks. Does that, does that answer your yeah, question, or? Question? Oh, now re oh, of course, it would be my dream to have 1,000 Mexican girls made and, and making a living out of it or whatever. But that is not how I live. I have my own job. It's a hobby, it must stay a hobby. And everybody who is involved in, in development of pinball machine, you cannot do it alone. So that means I have to hire people. I have to uh, rent a facility or whatever. And then a magic girl is being a success, selling them for 12, 13, 14,000, whatever. How can I explain all the people who now paid 45? On the other hand, then the magic girl is finished next title, I'm not an artist. I'm not creative in any way. So what am I going to do next? And what, gonna, and what, what am I going to do? Or we are going to do with all the people that rely on that factory or whatever. No, it's too big of a responsibility. Not for me. If somebody wants to reproduce it, be my guest. But also solve the problem with all the people who still are own money from this project in the past. I think that's fair enough. I even know that Jim didn't get paid for all his work at Sidsberg. Jeremy didn't get paid. So if you want to produce it, be also honest and give those people the money they deserve. That's the only thing I can say about it. I'm not going to do it. Okay. Any more? Or no?